This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University, and today I want to talk about Peter Schiff, gold, and Bitcoin. I've been getting a lot of questions about Peter Schiff, so I thought I would address uh, what I think of him and his views on gold. If you're interested in learning how to make money in both bull and bear markets, or you just want to see what I'm trading or investing in, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So for those of you who don't know, Peter Schiff is a fairly famous libertarian talking head and gold bug. He started Euro Pacific Capital and now he runs, I don't know if he changed the name to Shift Gold, but he also runs a company, uh, maybe it's the same company called Shift Gold, where he actually uh, is a gold broker dealer who sells uh, gold, I think mostly to retail investors. So uh, Peter Schiff and I would agree, I'm very bullish on physical gold as we see the dollar devaluing. So uh, someone like Peter Schiff and I have a lot in common in terms of our view of fiat money, the central bank, etc. But I want to sort of watch, walk you through the evolution of Peter Schiff's take on Bitcoin. And I think it's a, it's a cautionary tale for everyone because this really could happen to anyone where we make a bad decision and then we have to double down and then we reach the point of complete absurdity. So I'm going to show you how this works. Back in, in 2013, um, Peter Schiff was going on shows talking about how Bitcoin was a bubble. It was tulip mania. It was not a store of value like gold uh, 2.0. I think he criticized Bitcoin as well in 2012. I couldn't find the, the link to that. But this was back just to put into perspective today, gold, today Bitcoin is around uh, $12,000 per Bitcoin. This is back when Bitcoin was $375 per Bitcoin. He said that Bitcoin was in a bubble. Fast forward um, a few more years, I guess this is also 2013, where he says, uh, thinking of buying, this is a tweet from uh, November 22nd, 2013, thinking of buying Bitcoin instead of precious metals, think again, at this point, Bitcoin was $684. Uh, since then, at least up going up to March, Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin's obviously gone up a lot more. It's doubled again from here, roughly. Uh, but Bitcoin was up 872% and gold was up 35%. And uh, this is a pretty cruel meme. All my tweets age well. So fast forward to 2017, uh, when Bitcoin hit 4,000 for the first time. And again, this is going from, what did we say? 375, so it's basically up more than 10x. He doubles down and says Bitcoin is still in a bubble. Now, when something keeps going up and it goes up for maybe 10 years, it, re it reaches a point where it can become fairly absurd to say something is in a bubble. But this is the problem that Peter Schiff has is that he took a stance and he hasn't let new data alter his view. And so now he's making just crazy predictions. So here's an article from... Um, I think this was originally published in May because it was talking about the May 2020 halving, last updated in, in June. This is why Bitcoin will plunge after the 2020 halving, according to Peter Schiff. Obviously, the exact opposite has happened. It's been uh, going straight up uh, since there. So the problem with having this sort of confirmation bias is that you begin to make bad predictions that, that don't even make any sense because if, if supply goes down for a commodity, and let's say Bitcoin's sort of a commodity, it's scarce. Uh, if the supply goes down, why wouldn't you think that if demand stays equal, that the price would go up? I mean, Peter Schiff's a smart economist. He should understand these things. But now he's reached the point where he is so committed to gold and so against Bitcoin that he's begun to say completely absurd things. And he's really, uh, at least in my opinion, making a complete full of himself. So here's an article I'll link to about how gold is harder to confiscate than Bitcoin. Now, obviously, Bitcoin, you can memorize your, your 12 or 24 word keyword, uh, seed phrase, your recovery phrase, and you can walk across a border and you could take $100 million with you, or you could take $100,000, or you could take $100. Uh, Peter Schiff is saying that gold is more difficult. Gold is easier to transport and, and more difficult to confiscate than Bitcoin, which is just a common sense view. I'll link to this article so you can read it, but uh, a common sense view of this just that says that this is absurd. Obviously, gold is much more difficult to transport, especially as you start talking about significant sums of money. Bitcoin is much easier to hide. It's much easier to transport. It's much easier to beam around the gold. I could send some gold 
I, I could send some Bitcoin right now to anywhere, anywhere in the world, and it would take 10 minutes, 30 minutes, maybe an hour at most. How am I going to send gold? Uh, how am I going to send gold anywhere in the world, especially to some hostile uh, regime? And now I would say that we've reached the, the height of Peter Schiff's absurdity. This is a tweet from August 15th, 2020. And this is where I think he's, he's completely lost all credibility. Uh, in this tweet, he says, gold is not valuable because it's scarce. Gold's value comes from all the unique properties that it has as a metal. Utility makes gold valuable. Uh, scarcity just makes it expensive. Bitcoin has no unique properties. Scarcity without utility is meaningless. Meaningless. Now, the, pr the reason Schiff has been forced to adopt this point of view is that everyone has figured out that Bitcoin is much more scarce than gold. And so what Peter Schiff is being forced to do is to deny how important scarcity is. Now, obviously, copper is a lot less scarce than gold, but it has a lot more unique properties. In fact, it's much more used as an industrial metal. Uh, and, uh, but it's, but it's, it doesn't have the same value that gold does as if you look at the market cap of all copper versus the market cap of all gold. Gold is much more valuable, and I would argue it is because it is scarce. There are lots of very interesting metals like uh, palladium and platinum and some of the rare metals that uh, are not as, uh, not as valuable as gold simply because when you look at their stock to flow, and this is how we measure scarcity, the stock to flow would just be the existing inventories of a metal divided by annual production. So that the, it's sort of an inflation measurement or it's the inverse of inflation measurement. And uh, I'll link to a paper that explains this. But I would argue that this is why gold is so valuable. It has a very high stock to flow. Silver has the next highest stock to flow. And then you go on down the chain. Right now, Bitcoin has a stock to flow that's only slightly below gold. And uh, after the next halving, it's going to have a stock to flow. In other words, it's going to be much more scarce than gold. And so Peter Schiff, by refusing to admit his mistake, is now at the point where he's forced to argue very absurd things, that gold is, is harder to confiscate than Bitcoin, and also that uh, gold is not valuable because it's scarce. It's clearly valuable because it's scarce and because the existing supplies increase so slowly because it's very expensive to mine and uh, very, very dangerous to mine. There are a lot of environmental problems with gold mining, etc. And so I think he's a, he, Peter Schiff's really a cautionary tale on what happens when you double down on bad, uh, when you double down on bad bets, you begin to have to say really absurd things, such as that the scarcity of gold doesn't matter. Gold is actually valuable because of its scarcity. That's why it trades at a monetary premium to its utility or to its use value. I've talked about this a little bit in previous videos but uh, only 10% of gold is used for industrial purposes. The rest of the 90% of it is, is basically used as a store of value, as a form, as a very ancient form of money. I think Plan B does a really great job in this paper talking about stock to flow, relative scarcity, and the market cap values. A lot of people are confused by the fact that uh, they just look at the price of uh, they just look at the price of silver or the price of gold and try to decide which is cheaper then. But the way you have to do it is you have to look at the uh, the total market value of all the known above ground supplies. So for example, silver has a stock to flow. these these numbers are slightly dated now, but silver has a stock to flow of approximately thirty three, which means it would take thirty three years to replace all existing inventories above ground market value or market cap of 561 billion. Gold has a higher stock to flow. As a result, uh, we're not necessarily interested in, in the fact that the price per ounce is higher, but the total market value, the market cap is higher. This is probably closer to 11 or 12 trillion at this point. And uh, to put this in perspective, Bitcoin only has a market cap so far of about 210, 220 billion. And I think Plan B does a very good job of, of, of uh, correlating uh, market value, total market cap, to scarcity or stock to flow. And so we can see, for example, right here, 
gold has the highest stock to flow. It also has the highest market cap. And then there is a silver right here. Uh, Plan B is in the process of adding diamonds and real estate and some other things to this. And then these other dots we see are Bitcoin in various uh, previous incarnations when it had a lower stock to flow. But right now, Bitcoin stock to flow is closer to right here. And as a result, this is one reason I think it's going to go up so much. Now, Peter Schiff, is a, as I said, is a cautionary tale about confirmation bias, where we only look for evidence that confirms what we already believe. And he all, he's also a great example of cognitive dissonance, where he's gone so far down the path of hating Bitcoin that he has to start saying absurdities, such as that gold is harder to confiscate, and the fact that gold is not valuable uh, because it's scarce. And all of this are sort of uh, mental gymnastics that he has to go through in order to avoid saying, uh, admitting that he was wrong about Bitcoin, saying it was a, a bubble at 375 and a bubble at uh, 4,000 and a bubble at 10,000 and a bubble at 12,000, etc. So it's a cautionary tale. Uh, I know how difficult it is to change your opinion. I was a, a Tesla bear for uh, a long time. And then fortunately, I flipped around in May of 2020. This was extremely painful to admit that I was wrong. Uh, but I thought it was, uh, I'd much rather make money uh, than be right. And so I flipped around Tesla and got long around uh, 800. And that's been a very good ride. So I definitely, I understand how difficult it is to change your mind, especially publicly when you've made public pronouncements. And I made a lot of bearish public pronouncements about Tesla that turned out to be wrong. It's very di difficult uh, to change your mind publicly. And it's much easier just to settle into confirmation bias. But the problem with this is you end up uh, missing out on a lot of money. And so for this reason, I would say people ask me if they should follow Peter Schiff. I think he's uh, basically made himself a laughing stock at this point, especially with this latest tweet, uh, just totally misunderstanding why gold has, uh, has value as a monetary good. Let me know your questions, comments in the comment section below. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell as well, so you'll be notified when I post my next video. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.